Welcome friends, welcome once again to New Life in Jesus brought to you by the Emmanuel Christian Broadcasting Network. It is a joy and a privilege to bring you the word of God at this time and to greet you in the loving name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you have tuned in, I'd like to read from the book of 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to verse 7. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to verse Seven. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take away my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant is nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. We thank you that you have chosen us to be your vessels. We thank you, Lord, that even as we meditate on your word and as we listen to your word, help us, Lord. Help us in the emptiness of our soul. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your word. Fill us with your hope. Fill us with the knowledge of your power and resurrection, knowing that you are the Lord of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we read about a passage of scripture which many people are familiar about. There are many great sermons, great messages, great topics, great, great, great theological commentaries, um, great statements that have been made out of this passage of scripture. Where God has shown himself to be a miracle working God. Where his name of being Jehovah Jireh, my provider, was very obvious in this woman's life. Where she was at the end of her tether and knew no way out till God made a way for her. In every human being's life, there comes a time when we have to experience restoration. There comes a time, no matter how strong we are in God, no matter how spiritual we are, no matter how dynamic our ideas might see, seem to be, there comes a time when we need restoration. There comes a time when we need the touch from God as we face struggles in our lives. When we ask God to do things in our lives, when we give him requests or when we make requests towards God, heaven is not a problem. The problem is if God can find a vessel to put the miracle in. If God can find a vessel to put the miracle in. The Bible says this woman's husband died and he left to debt. She could not pay. Now the creditors came and in that culture at that time, if you could not pay a debt, they could enslave the next generation till the old debt was paid. This woman was in a desperate situation in her life. She had two sons who were in danger as the creditor was coming to take them away. The spirit of the world is like that, my brother, my sister. It is constantly trying to enslave us. And the key is to have something God can use in our lives. What could hinder God from bringing the presence, 
from bringing His presence in our life. The empty vessels, the Bible says, that this woman brought were being filled with oil. The empty vessels were being filled with oil. The prophet understood that a little jar of oil would keep the next generation free. A little jar of oil. In Genesis 8.20 we find that the first thing that Noah built when he, became, when he came out of the ark was an altar for God. Noah's view was to renew the worship of God. And in our own lives, in our own homes, it is the altar of God that will draw us close to his presence. And when we bring the vessels from our neighborhoods into the house, this woman was asked to bring the vessels. The prophet said to her, borrow not a few. Borrow not a few. You and I have to determine the magnitude of our desire for being blessed in our lives. How much really we want the presence of God. This woman had to choose how many vessels she would have. And how many empty vessels she would have. The ones she had to determine that. And God wants today my brother, my sister for us to be empty vessels. He wants us to be empty before him. Empty willing to have his presence. Empty seeking and desiring his presence. Empty looking forward to, to his goodness in our lives and rejoicing in his hope and his suffering. The problem is not about the miracle. The problem is not about God's ability or the provision. But when we expect to get great things from God, we need to empty ourselves of hindrances in our lives. We read in this passage of scripture that the prophet told this woman, when you come in, shut the door with your sons and pour it all into the vessels and set aside the full ones. When the vessel is full, it has no more need of oil. When the vessel is empty, it has need of oil. The more we give ourselves to God, the more we get rid of hindrances in our own personal lives, the more we go before him as empty vessels, he will fill us with the plans and purposes of our lives. Are you that vessel? I have titled this word, Be the Vessel. Be the vessel for Jesus Christ. When we give God all that we are, we can have more of his anointing. We can have more of his presence in our lives. This woman shut the door and the oil was moving. The oil was moving and it was filling the vessels. The oil was moving and today the oil of joy, the oil of the anointing of the great Holy Spirit is moving in the house of God. The problem is available vessels. Too many of us are too busy being full that we have no time to be available. God is not looking for able people. He's looking for available people. Would you be available for Jesus today? Would you be available with your life to say, Lord, I am ready, I am willing? Would you be available to say, Lord, touch my life? Would you be available to say, where can I go, Lord, without your presence? Would you be available to say, like Peter did, that where can we go, Lord Jesus, for you have the words of eternal life? Would you be available for him, my brother, my sister? The problem is not God's miracle power. He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. The problem is not about God's desire to bless us. The problem is not God's desire to fill us with his spirit. The problem is our availability for him. When there are available vessels, the oil will keep on moving. What is interesting here is that the Bible says in verse 6, When there were no more vessels, the oil ceased. The oil stopped flowing when there were no more vessels in that place. 
When we are available for God, the oil of His Spirit will keep on moving in our lives. The container is as important as the product. Now, when we think about day-to-day -day products that we buy, grocery, eggs, crisps, milk, whatever day-to-day -day products that we have, you need a place to put the product in. We cannot go to a shop or a place and just get milk and bring it out with our hands. We need a cup to put the coffee in. The vessel is important. The prophet asked this woman, what do you have in the house? The vessel is important in order to experience the presence of God. And you may be a broken vessel. You may be feeling as though you have no hope and you, you're, you're, you're out of shape in every area of your life. Many times we, there would have been all sorts of vessels there. All shapes and sizes. She went and got it from her neighbors. She went and got it from everywhere she could. All sorts of vessels. Big vessels, small vessels, shining vessels, dull vessels. There would have been all sorts of vessels. But the only thing that the vessel needed to be filled was that it had to be empty. Are you willing to be an empty vessel for Jesus? Are you willing to be empty before God so that there is no hindrance between him and you? Are you willing to be empty so that the heavens above us are not brass and we have an open heaven before God? Are you willing, my brother, my sister? The product adds value to the box. When it has a, and the box, when it has a product, is valuable. God has the oil. The miracle is looking for a vessel. God has his presence. He is looking for a vessel in you. Will you be that one? Will you be that vessel for Jesus Christ? Will you be that one who is willing to know his peace? Who is willing to experience his joy? Who is willing to, who is willing to share his burdens? Will you be that one who is willing to hear his voice? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Every mother will clean the bottle when she gives milk to a baby. And put milk in it that is clean. For us to have. To be filled in our lives with, with his presence. God is looking for a clean empty box. Will you be that one? Will you be a vessel in which he can put a dream in? A vessel that God can have at his disposal. A vessel that is full of God. When God made Adam. He didn't give dominion to any aliens. He gave it to man made from dirt. He gave it to man made from dirt and clay. No spirit in this world is legally permitted to rob, to murder, to kill or to harm anyone. They have to find and possess a body. The spirits cannot just go around doing whatever they like. They have to go and find and possess a body. Spirits without a vessel are illegal. When Jesus was born, God found a clean, empty vessel in Mary. The value is not in the box. It's what's in the box. It's what's in the vessel. In our own lives, when we are empty vessels, we, we, we will find that when Jesus fills us, the value is because we are in him and he is in us. God came to us in that vessel and his spirit is the oil today. He came down to earth in a fleshly, as a fleshly being. He came down leaving the glory of heaven. He humbled himself up to the point of death and gave himself on the cross of Calvary. He came to us in that vessel. He came to us with his spirit and his spirit is likened to the oil. He looked like everybody, but when he got in the temple, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Demons started crying to leave them alone. Satan couldn't hold it. People couldn't be bound anymore. Sickness couldn't stand in his presence. Hope, couldn't, hope was born again in everybody's heart. 
People knew until this very day and forevermore know that Jesus is the only way. We, when we know that Jesus is the only way, our truth, our hope and our life, we can trust in him. Satan knows he cannot stop the oil, so his only hope is to attack the vessel. And often that is what he does. Often that is what he does. He knows that if he fills the vessel with other things, if he fills the vessel with bitterness, if he fills the vessel with uh, anger and malice, if he fills the vessel, he knows he can block the vessel from being filled. Herod tried to destroy the vessel by killing the babies. Satan was terrified. When Jesus was nailed to a cross and the demons were rejoicing, they thought they had destroyed the vessel, for he was bleeding for the sins of all mankind. Jesus didn't say, I am finished on the cross. He said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. The vessel was in a tomb. His spirit got up three days later. Jesus rose bodily from the dead with the keys of eternal life. Satan is so defeated today, my brother, my sister, that he does not have the keys to his own house. He does not have the keys to his own house. That is why he cannot hold a person prisoner. He cannot hold you prisoner this very moment if you are a prisoner to addictions in your life. He cannot hold you and me as prisoners to habits. He cannot hold us as prisoners because Jesus holds the keys. And he has the keys to eternal life. When the miracle is living in you, it will change your walk with God. And that is what this poor woman experienced that day. In a desperate situation, in a desperate need, Jehovah Jireh was her provider. Jehovah Rapha is our comforter. Jehovah Shammah is the one, the ever sufficient one. Our God in our time of need. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the Bible says. He is the one whose face was marred beyond recognition. He had no form of comeliness. Yet he bore it all on the cross of Calvary. Be the vessel. Would you be the vessel today? God is looking up to you. In spite of the expanse of this world, in spite of the greatness of all that God has created around us, He wants to live in the human heart. He wants to be in our heart and Lord be the Lord of our lives as the vessel of our soul. He doesn't want a potion, He wants us empty. He wants us to pour out ourselves before Him and say, Lord, flow in my life. This is not about... You know, only to people who, who do not know him as their savior. It is also to those of us who know him and have a relationship with him. The oil must not stop. The oil must keep on flowing. The oil must be, the, we have to keep emptying ourselves before God. Emptying of hindrances. Emptying of unbelief. Emptying of sorrow. Emptying ourselves of uh, the lack of faith. Emptying ourselves of unforgiveness. Emptying ourselves in our life that our vessels may be full. The Bible says that when the vessels were full, they were set aside. They were set aside when the vessels were full. My brother, my sister, we need to empty ourselves every day. Empty ourselves every moment that the oil of joy will be flowing. The oil of joy for moaning. The spirit of gladness the Lord is willing to give unto you when we are filled. But in every situation when we come before him as empty vessels. The oil is not an issue. It keeps on flowing. But Jesus is searching for empty vessels. Will you be that one? Will you be the vessel that Jesus wants to use today? It is my prayer that you will be that vessel. It is his will that you will be that vessel. It is his perfect will that all of us who are watching should be delivered. The Bible says that it is his will that everyone and none should perish, but all should come to eternal life. 
This woman faced, this woman made a choice that day. And the choice she made looked after the next generation. The next generation is dependent on the choice you make in your life. This woman made a choice. And when Satan was trying to enslave her children, she made a choice to keep the oil flowing. When the oil was flowing, when the oil was flowing in her life, she had great victory. The creditors could not come. Satan cannot come and touch your soul, my brother, my sister. Even those who are watching, who are struggling in their lives with various issues, become an empty vessel this moment. We are going to pray shortly. And even as we pray, if you will surrender your life totally and say to Jesus, Lord, I am that empty vessel. I am willing to be that empty vessel. Then God will make a way, my brother, my sister. He will make a way in every situation of our lives. Let us pray. Lord, our loving Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you today. We thank you that we have read and heard that you want us to be empty vessels. Empty vessels so that the oil of your Holy Spirit will flow in our lives empty vessels so that the oil of joy will flow, that your goodness will flow, that your mercy will be new every morning, that your, that your grace will be all sufficient for us Lord, help us Father break through addictions, break through the power of sickness, break through every, every, every unbelief in our life, break through the lack of peace in our life, help us to rededicate our life, help us to surrender to you as empty vessels Father, we thank you in Jesus name Amen. My brother, my sister, I pray that you have chosen to be that empty vessel. That you have chosen to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. If that is you, write to us, email us, call us. If you need prayer, we love to know what Jesus is doing in your life. Share with us your testimonies for the glory of God. Till we meet again next time on New Life in Jesus, God bless you and 